I'm not surprised. I, I, I think the um, steps that Sadiq Khan took to say you don't have the trust and confidence of communities, especially after the Charing Cross um, Operation Hutton revelations, and that had a specific resonance with me because I served at Charing Cross Police Station between 2000 and 2004. And I know you'll have small numbers of officers who might have those thoughts, but you have to be proactive as a, a supervisor to detect them and to and direct them and, and to sanction them if need be. But like everything, I, I couldn't believe what I read. And, and I can understand it was a, the end of a litany of issues that Chrisetta Dick has allowed to manifest during her watch, and she had to go. What, why do you think she was unable to, to tackle this, this rotten culture within the Met? What, what was she doing wrong? Well, um, I remember when she, she was appointed in 2017, I actually welcomed her appointment, despite the issues around John Charles Menengue's there shooting at Stockwell, and, uh, and I thought she'd be a breath of fresh air, because she was part of McPherson and all the recommendations 20 years earlier. So I really thought she was going to bring in a, a, a real ethical leadership, a real understanding of accountability and transparency, and not double down on what's going on. But in, in, in the end, we saw that she was saying, well, she doesn't recognise institutional sexism. She doesn't recognise institutional racism. And in fact, she started to become like a, a blocker. She was um, part of the problem, not part of the solution. And then... She, she, during um, the Black Lives Matter issues and, and the George Floyd murder, she said she's not going to investigate the Stephen Lawrence case anymore. And that had such a massive impact, on, not only on the Lawrence family, but on the wider black community. And that's when trust and confidence went down severely. And remember, the cornerstone of policing is trust and confidence. If you don't have the trust and confidence of communities, then you are literally not policing with authority. And you can't arrest your way out of the problem. You can't stop and search your way out of the problem. You've got to work in partnership with the communities. And the black community in itself saw trust and confidence at its lowest ebb. And so she had to go because she will not instill that confidence back in those communities. But, but she herself uh, claimed to be uh, doing all that she could. This morning she said, I have absolutely no intention of going and I believe that I am and have been actually for the last five years leading a real transformation in the Met. So what had she put in place? That's a very good question. I mean, if you just look at the Sarah Everard case and they knew a police officer was involved and eventually gets charged and convicted. Six months later, at his conviction, they, they, they suggested the way in which you help women and girls to challenge officers is to get them to pass on their radio and speak to them on, uh, speak to the control room or go to a bus and, and try and speak to the bus driver so they can use the radio. I mean, that was so inept. I thought to myself, is that all you can come up with six months after the, the, the murder of, of Sarah Everard? And, 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 and those are sort of things that you think is not going to instill confidence in people. And, and, and if, if you look at all the people that have come out, a lot of the women are saying, we, we are glad to see her go. And, and that's the irony. The first female commissioner seemed to have created so much barriers for her own gender. It, it beggars belief. Why do you think she had a, a, a tin ear? Was she just not really in touch with what was happening in, in the, the, the roots of the, the organisation? I think she was in so much denial and she bought into a certain type of a culture that she couldn't see it in a way. Because I've I, I known Chris, she told me to call her Chris 20 odd years ago and I've done a lot of work with her, highlighted in my autobiography, Closing Ranks. So I'm not just being familiar just for the sake of it. But I, I remember her um, talking about she doesn't recognise institutional racism. 20 odd years ago, she was involved in McPherson and the recommendations and everything that went with it. So, so for her to say she doesn't recognise it, because nothing has changed. The whole, it's the same issues of recruitment, retention, progression are still there. The issues of stop and search and the impact it has on young black men 
and we've seen on social media time and time again of very, very aggressive arrests, she would never really say, we have a problem. We're going to do something about it and ensure that it's sustainable and they're not going to hold back on being, you know, popular and, and, and ingratiate themselves with a the culture. And I think that's what she did. She, she seemed to say, well, listen, I'm going to defend the culture like it's my child and whoever's trying to criticise it, she's going to protect them and, 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 and not allow um, anyone to criticise. And, and so she became, as I said, a, a barrier of accountability and transparency. Instead of saying, we have an open organisation and it's a, a service and we want to work in partnership with all communities. There are very many uh, instances in which she's been criticised. Many cases, you mentioned one, Jean-Charles de Menezes, Extinction Rebellion, uh, Sarah Everard, we know, Nicole Henry and Bieber Smallman, Daniel Morgan. Do you think that she was allowed to remain in post far too long? I think so. I, I, really, I, I, I cannot see how um, another officer, especially a male officer, would have been given that amount of flexibility. I don't think they would have got the job in the first place. She's a very capable person. And it saddens me that she didn't deliver, as I know she could have. And I, I know um, there's a lot of people in the organisation to be sad for it. But I really believe there are really strong leaders, not just in London, but in, in, in police services across the country, who can do an amazing job to, to really transform the Met. Because the Met is the largest organization police service in the country and it needs a certain amount of ethical leadership and a real understanding of the communities they serve and i really i'd like to think this change will be an improvement that everyone will reflect back and say yes we acknowledge there was changes to be need to, to be done and it's been done and just give that person time and i'm sure we will see the results we all want to see Leroy Logan, thank you very much for speaking to us, sharing your views with us, Leroy Logan, the former superintendent at Met Police.